Hi, it's David again with ConcertBlogger.com. I'm here with um, Michael O. He's got a great new album that just came out, and uh, he's been kind enough to sit down and, and talk to us for a few moments. And uh, welcome. Hi, Michael. How are you? How are you doing? Hi. Um, you were born into a prominent family. Your grandfather was a great Nigerian eco economist and scholar. How did music become your passion? Yeah, it's really random, huh? Yeah. My, my family is all about education, and, and uh, yeah, I, I just fell in love with music because it's just, it's just natural. I mean, I uh, have been doing it all my life, and uh, I've loved music ever since I was a little kid. So it's just really natural for me. Cool. Um, were you, was there a lot of music around your house when you were growing up? Was it like your your mother or father were into music, or? Yeah, growing up with my mom, like she loved music. Even when she was uh, pregnant with me, she used to play four artists. She used to play uh, Michael Jackson, Dolly Parton, Whitney Houston, and Freddie Mercury from Queen. So those are like my all-time favorite artists and artists that I grew up listening to. Even before birth. Yeah, even <laughs> before birth. So, so yeah, I mean, like I've loved music. You know, she is probably probably the main reason why music is such a love in my life. Awesome. Um, so that's obviously the bands that you're really influenced by. Do you find that you have a lot of those artists in your music that you try to implement into your music? Yeah, I think uh, the cool thing about all those artists is that they all know how to sing a song really well and they know how to interpret a song um, to where you really feel what they're singing. Um, so yeah, I think they're all dope. Even like when I tell people that I like Dolly Parton, they laugh at me, but I'm like, she. Jolene like, is a rocking song. That's such an awesome lyricist, song. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they all are really good. Okay, so you're, you're obviously extremely smart. You went to prestigious Dartmouth in the Ivy League. And uh, how did you balance your music with this very serious and demanding ac academic pursuits that you were going through? First of all, I'm probably one of the dumbest people from my college, so <laughs> let's, let's put it out there. Um, but it was cool. I mean, I did the Airs, which, the Dartmouth Airs, which was an acapella group. Uh, and basically, it was kind of like a chill thing where like I hung out with them and we did music. It wasn't so much a rigorous music thing. I wasn't really interested in doing music as a career until after I did the TV show that NBC is the same. So um, basically, it was just like a, the, doing the airs was my musical escape, and it was also my place to hang out with friends. So. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that it was you know demanding enough if you if you you know you're really working hard on on just the study end of it. To be able to work the music into it, it has to be more of a of an escape and a fun type thing rather than I have to work at that too. Yeah, and we worked hard, but it was more like a fraternity. It was more like a place where we could just go and hang out and just have a lot of fun together. Cool. Um, tell me about your trip to Nigeria and how it changed your life. Yeah, so like my family is Nigerian, um, and my mom goes back a lot, and uh, we went back to do some World AIDS Day help, and uh, that was when I was 14, and that really changed my life. Um, so I started an organization that helps kids with education uh, in the global south, uh, and particularly in Nigeria, so yeah, it's been really fun. Yeah. Part of the proceeds actually of my EP in the beginning goes to the Mudani Foundation, which is uh, the foundation that, that we started. That's so cool. You were 14 when you started it? Or? Yeah. yeah. The, you started a foundation when you were 14. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. Um, so you grew up in Maine. Yeah. yeah. How different? How, yeah, really. How, how difficult was that? I lived in New Hampshire for a while and it's very rural. Uh, how did that solitude affect you growing up and kind of make its way into your music? Uh, I don't know if growing up from Maine actually made it its way to my music, it was, but it was actually a cool place to grow up. Um, it was really secluded. I didn't know, as I told you, I didn't know how to drive until I was 22, so until last year. Uh, and wow. I, I do that in Los Angeles. Well, yeah, so, yeah. the really worst place to learn. Especially when I go back to Maine, it's like crazy because everybody drives so slow that I'm always just like trying to get Drive out. Los Angeles on them. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it was really cool to grow up in such a small secluded space because I really got to love nature. And, and uh, yeah, it was a quiet upbringing. Cool. So your, your college singing, singing group, uh, the Dartmouth Airs, plays second on, that, on the NBC show, um, The Sing-Off. You were widely lauded as a true talent by the music industry insiders, and what was that experience really like? How did that, how did that affect you? It changed my life. Um, doing the sing-off showed me what I was kind of born to do with my life, which is music. I mean, before doing that, I just ended a real estate investment internship, and now I was thinking that I was <laughs> totally going to do that. different. That's what you're going to do for different. your life. Yeah, exactly. But then the sing-off really kind of put in my mind what I wanted to do in my life in this music. And we would work 16-hour days, but it just didn't feel like work. So I. I'm the luckiest guy in the world to be able to have had that experience because it changed my life. Awesome. With, with all this buzz around you and with the CP, 
Uh, you seem to have taken a step back from everything. Uh, you wrote, recorded, and produced this yourself with the help of a few close confidants. Uh, what made you decide to take this route rather than, I'm sure there were people that wanted to work with you um, after your experience on the show, and it seems like you kind of wanted to do it yourself. Yeah, I wanted to kind of make my own music first and, and kind of live through my music and not really be influenced by a lot of people. Um, that's why I kind of didn't want to sign with a record label off the bat because I wanted to put my voice in before anyone else would change it. Uh, so every song was written and co-produced by me. And uh, it, was a it was a labor of love. And you know when artists are like, yeah, I put my all into this and this is like everything. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. But I actually put everything I, I am and everything that's in me into this project. And I am so proud of this EP because it's just, it's really me. It's, it's everything that I have experienced from the ups and downs and everything that I hope to experience in the world. Okay, so it seems that that was the, the right way to go for you in that your your debut last week at uh, number 147 in the iTunes charts and uh, fifth in the R&B charts. That's like the right thing to do, it seems. Uh, what's next? Do you have some touring, some charity work, or what's Definitely, next for you? There'll be some touring, uh, some show gigs, and uh, I'll be going around the country going to EP. Uh, but I, <laughs> like, as you read those numbers, like, it's actually just crazy to think that it would even chart. Like, I always told my mom, like, you know, I knew you would buy it, mom, and I knew, like, I would buy it, but not tell anyone I'd buy it, but I, I bought it. <laughs> so I knew there'd be two sales, like, for the first one. I was positive I was, of that. I was positive about that. But to just to see my name, like, next to Bruno Mars and, and uh, Kelly Rowland and, like, a lot of people was, was mind-boggling. It was crazy. And I, I, it, I'm just so lucky to have the fans that I have who really have supported me since the sing off and, you know, yeah, I, I think it really goes to show you where the music industry is going too in a way in that it's not the traditional you get signed by a record label and they promote you and that's the only way you sell records. I think that that with the internet and the iTunes and it just makes it so much easier to discover new artists um, out there and I think that you get to the benefit of that and especially doing it the right way and having the voice that you have and, and a little bit of recognition and that's what you need to to, to, to succeed in this. Yeah, well, right I still have a long ways to go, so hopefully, yeah. Like, I, I wanted to do this career because I wanted to help people and uh, change lives and hopefully influence people and inspire people with my music. So, I have a long way to go, but I'm really pumped. <laughs> well, you've got a number of years to go. You're still yeah. young, so. Okay, my traditional last question of all my interviewees, and I'm excited to hear your answer uh, about this one. What's something personal about yourself that maybe your fans don't really know? but that you'd like them to know? Maybe a hidden, hidden talent or a pet or something of that nature? Uh, I mean, I have so many, like not hidden talents, but just so many things that people like will be like, why does he know or like that? <laughs> um, I guess it's something that people don't know is that I've lived in over 20 different countries. My mom, How many? 20. 20, wow. My mom went to the World Bank, so like I would live like from places like Russia to, to South Africa to Brazil. And it got to the point where I become friends with like flight attendants. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome, that's awesome that's though. Crazy. That's somebody nice to know. Yeah, but it was, it was a cool time to do that. Great, well thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll be seeing you out there on the road uh, coming up this fall. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.